Yo, what's up everyone? It's your boy! Welcome back to the video. Today's video, I'm so hyped for this one because this one is budget pendulums. You guys have been asking for this for a long time. A lot of people on Patreon have been asking for it as well. So, your prayers have been answered. The pen gods been listening, baby! No Magician Souls, super, super, super budget. Here we go. Before we get into it, guys, you just saved yourself $300 with Magician Souls. So consider dropping a few bucks on a total of your mind cloud play, man. Holy shit, look at that bicep, baby. Let's go. Get your beautiful total of your mind cloud play mats in the description below. They're absolutely amazing. And with that being said, if you guys want to learn more about pendulums, go on my pendulum training down below. And let's get started, boys. Budget, Budget. pendulums with no Magician Souls. And you already know we're throwing in magicians. We're going to get straight into right now. This is the a random test I'm going to be doing. And as you see, there's a Royal Magical Library. This card is a fantastic budget alternative to be playing in your deck. Why? If you guys, if you guys notice why we're playing, why we're playing all the Blue Boy, the extenders for the Crowley. Well, the whole reason is the Souls. So if you don't play Magician Souls, you shouldn't play Restage. You shouldn't play Jester Confit. If you don't play Magician Souls with the Restage, there's no point for the confit. If there's no confit, there's no point for the restage. If there's no souls, there's no point for the restage. If there's no souls, there's no point of doing the extenders for the blue boys. So because of that, you only play one blue boy, one secrets, one knowledge, only one blue boy, which frees up you playing two Royal Magical Library. Now you're only playing three normal summons, just three normal summons. It doesn't conflict with blue boy. You're playing three normal summons, one blue boy, and two Royal Magical Library in a deck that plays a bunch of Pendulum Calls that you can discard if you draw too many. So three normal summons is not too many, does not conflict. And you're going to notice that Royal Magical Library is going to draw us like five cards alone. The card literally says, when this card is normal summon, draw five. Who needs Magician Souls to draw for you? Who needs all these extenders to draw for you? When you got Royal Magical Library drawing you around five cards, bro, every single time. And the fact that you're playing Duelist Alliance and Pen Call, you're playing so many more spell cards. And you're literally playing six Duelist Alliances and Pen Calls in this budget version. Because uh, Pendulum Graph is also a card you can search with Duelist Alliance. Because you're playing Pendulum Magicians in this list, which I think... Uh, to, to, if you take out all those cards, if you also should take out Instant Fusion, because Instant Fusion will bring up Millennium Eyes and Strict. That's expensive. So that's like 10 cards you're taking out of your deck. So there's no other alternative to put in. You can play Mythical Endymion, but they suck. Mythical Beasts suck. I'd rather Pendulum, Magician, Pendulum Magicians over Mythical Endymion cards any day of the week. Uh, so plus the fact you're allowed to play Royal Magic Library to draw so many more cards. And here you are. You're already, look at that. You have uh, seven cards in your hand. You haven't pendulum summoned yet. You have a jackal stopping from Nibiru. You have an abductor with infinite counters. You can do whatever you want. In fact, we have so many cards right now. We are so plus that we can't even pendulum summon our whole hand. I can't even pendulum summon the Celestial. How sad. I'm not even going to get its effect now. So sad. How sad. We're going to summon Pro Poison out here. We're going to go into Absolute Dragon. Uh, there's no too many uh, cool... I'm not playing even one Magician Souls to make it very budget for you guys. Because I'm not even playing the one Magician Souls. Uh, otherwise, I go Time Start into the Magician Souls into another Negate, like a Jack, another Jack or something like that. Another Negate that you need be just a free extender for the Magician Souls. And then you go Souls and the Crowley into Link 3. So that's how I would do, but... Uh, instead, we're going to go Vortex. And here, I have two options. So, Selino summon out a Mighty Master. And here, we have two options. Either, if you could, if you have a Savage Dragon, it's been out for a long time. Put out a Savage Dragon. Uh, so, you get four Negates. Plus, Selino summon out another Mighty Master. The opponent's has five Negates. And there are outs to the deck to Dark Ruler in the side deck. So, don't worry about Dark Ruler. The Dark Ruler no one mains that deck. That card is so easy to defeat. Uh, but, the option that we're going to be going with, because Savage Dragon might be too expensive for some of you guys. It's been around for a while, that's why I just put it in there. The other option will be Abyss Dweller. Abyss Dweller, you just hit that in the draw phase. And your opponent, most decks cannot play through Dweller right now. So, Dweller, backed up by Mighty Master, Jackal, and Vortex, is pretty good. Nice Nadir Servant setting Nintis, bro. Their Nintis isn't going to do anything to you. So, this is, uh, the new deck. Uh, you have three cards in hand. Like, literally, look at this. Full scale. Abductor's going to search for next. So, you're going to drop. Next turn, you're going to drop four. Right? You're going to draw one card. So, you have four. Abductor effect's going to resolve. So, you'll have five. Uh, so, you have five cards to start. And then Mighty Master will bounce a card six. And then the other Mighty Master and Grave will bounce a card seven. So, you're going to start your turn with seven cards in hand. Next turn. Like, good luck. Have fun, bro. And your extra deck is completely full. You have ten extra deck cards left. So, Magician and Demian is better for the grind game. It's not seven negates how Pyrrhon Demian does, but this is still five negates. So, uh, good luck, have fun. You're getting absolutely obliterated. Now, I'm going to show you guys the deck list for all my budget friends out there. Let's go. This is the deck profile. Uh, as you see over here, very, very, very budget. I made sure to go out of my way to make it budget as hell. 
I took out the Savage we are talking about just for like to have this. And look at the main deck, nothing in here is worth more than a dollar. I'm gonna go through the main deck and the side deck as well is made to defeat the meta. So when your opponent tries to Numer on you, you still got Chalice, you got Widow Anchor. You got all of these cards specifically made for this meta. And especially when everything comes out, you have four Mystic Mines and goes and going second, the game plan. Yeah, you have D6 versus Numeron, and against uh, your pen grab against Numeron as well. So you have seven outs to Numeron, and then against uh, any deck that puts up a big board, any like Infernoble, Megalith, anything like that, you got your four Mystic Minds, like the end, be all, end all, and then you got six negates for them. So you got the Chalice, you got the Widow Anchor if they try and negate the Mystic Mind, you got all this stuff, and they're imperm alternatives and uh, cheap alternatives to droplet. So don't need to drop out 90 bucks for Forbidden Droplet and Impermanence like everyone's doing. When you got Chalice and Widow Anchor, and if you think that Tactics Talents like what, 80 bucks is better than Mystic Mine, you're actually completely mistaken. Mystic Mine is a million times better. It's an auto win by itself. That's the whole idea behind the deck, and you could get rid of Secret Village with Secret Village and Terraforming. You can protect yourself from Dark Ruler as well as the Pengraph. So you have so many outs to that. But now I'm going to get into the extra deck profile. So you got Servant and Demon, Triple Abductor. I don't care if you're playing Pendulum Magicians. These four need to be in every deck. These seven, I must say. Uh, you just draw one, you auto win. You just auto, auto, auto win with these seven. But because we're not playing the Magician Souls and the Extenders, now you're going to find like different ways. So you're not playing Extenders. Now you're going to play the deck a little bit differently. We're still playing Chronograph as, and Tangiza as an Extender. You need some Extender out there. You can't play with zero Extenders. And the fact that Abductor searches the Chronograph, it's vital. Completely vital. So now my eyes, you have like, uh, you don't have the 20 extenders in my other deck, but you got the Chronograph, the Abductor to search, the Chronograph, you got the Servant and the Master to search the Servant. So at least you got some monsters to push onto the field before your pen summon, as well as the one reasoning. So it's like you have like 10, 11 extenders there. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. You got 11 extenders out there, which is a lot better than zero. So you're not playing pure pen magicians, but you're still having a good mix of the fact that you're playing the extenders and the consistency of endymion combined with the utility power and longevity of magicians combine it together you got yourself actually a really amazing deck uh and then you got the you got six magicians here the time gaze you already played which is great double double harmonizing in case you banish one i would actually advise me to play one harmonizing as you guys saw in the comment tutorial it happens a lot you really don't have space for harmonizing to summon you have so many cards to summon it's so plus and even if not sometimes you just don't need harmonizing effect to resolve if that you don't need harmonizing ever to be honest uh it might even be correct to play a, uh something else like another spell card another engine if you don't guys are not a fan of royal magical library at all which i think is amazing royal magical library drew five times for us you could take these three out for double metal Fools fusion sorry double foolish brother goods and a metal Fools fusion because you're playing pen call you just pen call away the metal Fools fusion so it's very good and if you ever open double one like one pen call one alliance alliance always searches pendulum graph anyways so to be able to pen call a grave effect is huge if you were to hard draw a fusion. So that's pretty good for uh, budget alternatives. But if you're playing double harmo, if it's a budget alternative, I would assume it's not only budget, but that you're a little bit new to the game, just a little bit. So double harmo makes it a lot easier for you guys to pull off your combos. I don't care if you're playing desires and banish the harmo, it's not important. One poison, one pit, one celestial. It's the best magician version while you're playing servant and abductor. I understand Oak Dragon is very good. I understand that. But if you're playing abductor and servant and skill, Oak Dragon is just not important. You got the one blue boy. One blue, once he gets one knowledge, is all you need in this build. Like I said, there's not enough extenders to merit playing two and two, two blue boy, two secrets. In this version, just way different. Double Royal Magical Library, as you guys saw, it's just way better than blue boy. At least it's dropped five times. Uh, we drew four, four or five. I lost count after two. World Magic Library is just broken. You got triple desires for more draw power, triple allure, secrets, knowledge, upstart into the void. You're playing so much draw power, it's crazy. So these 10 plus the blue boy plus the Royal Magic Library, you're still playing 13 draw cards despite the fact of not playing uh, multiple blue boy, multiple secrets, despite the fact of not playing triple magician souls. So it's still extremely powerful. Uh, and the fact that you're not extending into Crowley, it makes up for the fact that you're playing Royal Magical Library. Because if you hard draw it, you're uh, amazing. Reasoning as well is very good in this list because your opponent will never call four. Uh, they don't know you're playing Pendulum, Magician. They think you're playing Endymion. So they're going to call six or seven. And that's where your Royal Magical Library will get summoned. Your Abductor will get summoned. Your other random Spellcaster is going to get summoned. And you can make Crowley anyways. So it's another great extender in this specific list because your opponent will not call level four. They'll call level seven or six. Or if you just hard randomly use it, they'll call one. Uh, then triple desire, all these 10 draw cards over here, the, the whole package. Then triple mastery, triple pen call, and triple alliance. I know some people think these six are overclogging a pen call, but alliance's main goal is to get pendulum graph. Because pendulum graph is broken, it literally pops two cards. 
You guys, people don't understand how good it is. It's a great contingency plan where if you get interrupted, you just pendulum graph the whole board. It's like El Lich, except it's actually good. And so you got triple pen call, potentially six pen call, potentially four pen graph, but it's all in seven cards. It's more like three, three, one. Really good card that Alliance could decide to search. And just more spell counters for Royal Magic Library, Abductor, Servant, Mastery, Jackal, Mighty Master, etc. Really, really good. Uh, side deck, the Secret Village and the Terraforming, uh, when you want to go first. And then going second, you got the Terraforming and Triple Mystic Mine. Uh, you never actually go first because you always win game one. So you should actually put the Secret Village at the end because like, you're never going to use it. But it's beside the Terraforming, so that's why I thought we just put them together. But for these four, you got these four, the seven. Like I said, Widow Anchor, Chalice, and Dino Wrestler are very underrated. Uh, for those that cannot afford Droppa and Imperm, these almost do the same thing because if you're facing Megalith, you're dropping this on the draw phase anyway, so Needle Fiber will not resolve. If you're facing another deck like Inferno Bowl, you're still using this to stop Savage, so you just use it off the bat. And yes, Droppa is better than these cards, and yes, Imperm is better than these cards because it's a hand trap, but at the same time, Imperm has the same idea like Widow. You go, if you control no monsters, you must use Imperm right away off the bat. I mean, you're using Widow off the bat, right? So typically you save Imperm for your turn. So you might as well just use Widow Anchor at that point. It does the same thing. And the fact that you're playing this many spell cards, if you hold onto it and maybe use all your spell cards and then let the Widow resolve, you could potentially steal your opponent's monster too. So it's actually very good from that sense. Um, I thought about even playing one Hornet and one Kagari with the Widows going second only and just get free spell kindness for your cards. But I thought, ah, whatever, why not? It's a solid opinion though, solid option. Uh, and the, the combination of these cards, your Mystic Mind always resolve. You can clear any board, and Pendulum's Blitzkrieg through boards. You just negate the actual spell negates, and then you just Mighty Master everything. Uh, for Trap decks, you got Dino Wrestler, Red Reboot, and Triple Cosmic. I don't want to put in Denko, uh, because, yes, you could take out the two... You could take out these five, the two Royal Magic Library, Blue Boy Seekers Knowledge against Trap decks, these five, and put in Triple Denko, Reboot, Dino Wrestler. But I think Cosmic could stop from anti-spell and stuff. But you know what? I just convinced myself. We're putting Denko Sekka in here. Uh, you want auto wins against trap decks, and Dino Wrestler is not an auto win, auto win, but it's pretty damn good. And the fact that Dino Wrestler could go into both monster against monster decks and trap decks is very good. And when you're going first, you put in the two secret villages uh, for whatever of your choice uh, that you don't that you like the least. You just take out two cards uh, to ensure you're not losing to Dark Ruler. Actually, like you got Triple Celine, Crowley, Cross, you Daybreaker, Nightmare Service, Nightmare Phoenix, Boral Sword. Yes, you need one Boral Sword or one Access Code. Pick one. If you have Access Code, take it. If not, play Boral Sword. Uh, Triple Selene's ideal, but if you can't afford it and just play two Selene, it's okay. But, like, three Selene's the best. If, but if you can only afford two, just play two. It's okay. Uh, Time Star, Dweller, Tornado. I think that you should play one of each of these rank fours. They're very good. Absolute Vortex and Dragster. If you can afford uh, Savage Dragon, you can put that in instead of Dragster or put that in instead of Tornado Dragon. And if you don't want to spend more money, you can take out the third Selene for virtually any Synchro 8 Omega. I don't know, any Synchro 8 you can find that's cheap. There's a few of them out there that's pretty good. So that's the video, guys. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me on Patreon where I answer every single pendulum question, any and at every time. Consider getting the beautiful trip game playmat, tripgaming.com, because it's the most beautiful playmat of all time. Hit the subscribe button if you have a brain. Smash the like button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Pen best deck. Let's go. Later, guys. Peace.